Welcome to Living from the Heart. I am your host, Tina Thrustle, light dancer, co-founder of Best You Can Be, and messenger of the Shin Dao, the way of the heart. Before I welcome today's guest, I'd like to draw your attention to the words that are crawling along the bottom of the screen there, and that is an invitation to receive a complimentary subscription to Heart and Mind Matters. Every other Tuesday morning, Neil and I uh, produce this easing with an inspirational article, YouTube video, quote of the week. It's intended as an uplift in your week, and we invite you to receive that by subscribing at bestyoucanbe.ca, B-E-S-T, the letter U, C-A-N, the letter B dot C-A. So I am so excited to have Katerina Berger on my show today. It's interesting, I hate to admit it, but I actually detested Facebook when it first became available. I thought it was going to be a way for people to become fooled into thinking they were connected and become more disconnected because we didn't actually see each other face to face. However, it was Facebook that brought Katerina and I together. We were Facebook friends and she lives in BC and was making a trip into Calgary and much to my surprise said, I've been following you on Facebook. I love your energy. I love what you're doing. I'd love to meet you. And we got together and had a wonderful coffee. And I knew this is a woman who truly does live from her heart. So when the idea for this show came up, she was immediately on my list of people to bring on the show. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Katerina. There you are. Hello. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Such a delight to see you here. Yeah, you too. And thanks for that beautiful introduction. It was so great to see you in Calgary when I came last year. And, um, you know, I think, you know, we have a good connection. So it's good. I think so, too. Yeah. People who live from their heart know immediately, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah, the people that have the right energy just immediately resonate. Yeah. And, and I encourage people to listen to that little inner voice that says, yes, or oh, no, stay away <laughs> when you meet people. Because our, our inner guide knows what yeah. great energy match and what's not for us. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. So what does living from your heart mean to you, Katrina? I do it every day and I've really practiced it a lot over the years and it's not really practice anymore. It's so easy. Um, living from the heart means that you love people um, for who they are and where they are at and not for who you expect or want them to be. And so when I meet people, I meet them that way. Mm. And that's living from the heart in my world. Yeah. That's beautiful. Letting people be who they are. Mm -hmm. That is um, a Sherry Huber is a Zen master and mm -hmm. she defines compassion that way. Mm -hmm. uh, being, uh, being in a calm space, holding space for people to be who they are, how mm -hmm. they are in the moment without having to change anything. That's right. And yeah. I, yeah, I have to say, I think you're just a, a living, breathing example of compassion. Thank you very much. And so are you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. So I know that you're passionate about sharing beautiful images. One of the things I love about your Facebook posts are the beautiful photographs oh. you take of this beautiful area that you live in. Talk about, talk about that a little bit. How, is, how does that passion fuel you? So a uh, long time ago, I was a meditator and I taught meditation classes and that sort of thing. And, you know, I, I would get out in nature with my cell phone and I'd be so thrilled to take any little picture. And of course, none of them really turned out as well as I wanted to. Last year, I inherited my dad's camera and then my partner started teaching me how to use it. I've always had this passion for all sentient beings and believing that we are all so very connected. So when we get out in nature, we're not looking for it, but hearts show up everywhere. Mm -hmm. Every time we go out, whether it's in the clouds, whether it's in the, you know, the feathers of a bird, whether it's in the trees, there are actual parts of the trees that have hearts in them. We're not looking for it. It just shows up. And it's the most amazing thing. So for me, that's what it's all about. And I'm very passionate about taking pictures now. And I just want to share 
nature and how nature is connected to us on so many levels and how it can teach us to be connected with each other too. Mm, that is so beautiful. I know for myself, that's when I feel closest to the source of all that is, when I'm mm -hmm. in nature. Exactly, yeah. As you say, everything is a sentient being. All yeah. life is sacred. Yes, the, it is. The, the trees, the birds, the insects, the people, we are mm -hmm. all, we are all equally deserving of loving kindness and attention. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing that it does is it brings you into the moment. So no matter what you're struggling with in your life, you go into nature and there's nothing else but nature. You're in the moment. You're right here right now. That's so true. Uh, mm -hmm. And there is no greater mindfulness practice than just yes. to be. In exactly. Yeah. 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 Be here now. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're passionate about sharing nature with people and you do mm -hmm. that through your photography. Yeah. I believe you also do that by inviting your coaching clients to your beautiful home on the water there, don't you? I do sometimes. It depends. And I also have an office just very close to me um, that is also waterfront kind of thing. And uh, mm -hmm. so I, I see some of my clients there, but most of my work actually is over the phone um, anywhere in the world, actually. Uh, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, that's neat. So do you, do you do that work when you're on the phone with people? Are you sitting out on your deck taking a view <laughs> of the ocean or are you... Um, well, my house is wall to wall windows of the ocean. So, mm. <laughs> so I'm always looking at it no matter which room I'm in. So it's kind of cool that way. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. And it inspires me actually, because I'm such a water baby. I love water. I'm a Pisces, you know, and um, I just, I'm drawn to the water. And I think it inspires me to inspire my clients and help them to heal on a much deeper level, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that, yeah, it just resonates for me. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. You're talking about seeing the heart everywhere. I have a new client that comes to see me for my Shindow heart wave session. Yeah. And she said that, unlike you, she said, I'm a heart seeker. I'm looking yeah. for hearts everywhere. And it's interesting, just the difference in the languaging and the energy behind that. You said mm -hmm. that you, you don't look for hearts. You're just open. We notice. And we you notice. notice. And yeah. they're rare. Yeah. It's the same with any of my practice as far as the coaching or the Reiki goes. Notice the healing that's wanting to happen. Or notice who's coming into your space that is meant to be in your space. Instead of looking for and searching for the healing, searching for this, that, and the other thing, notice it first. Mm, that reminds me of one of Osho's quotes about Osho. <laughs> yeah, stop, don't seek, don't. What does it say? Don't seek, don't search, don't. Uh, yeah, whatever. But it says, relax, relax, yeah. and it will be there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you and I are both a part of the New Thought movement, and the first thing you need to do, rather than to receive and then believe, is to believe and then receive. And that's a big part of my work is to help people to understand that. Mm -hmm. It's your birthright to be happy. And I really, really believe that. So if you can start to believe that you are meant to be happy, it will come. It will all come to you. It's true. You know, it's funny. I've got all these things that are coming to mind, like <laughs> Henry Ford, you know, whether you believe yeah. you can or you believe you can't, you're right. That's it. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Believe and it can happen. Yeah. Don't believe it can't happen and it won't happen. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's yeah. so, so simple. Yeah. You know, what's the challenge? I mean, people really are. Is it because it's so simple that people can't believe that it's true? Well, um, what happens is, is that most people uh, condition themselves and train themselves um, to be, uh, to trust and believe in the story that they've created for themselves. So what I help them to do is to kind of reframe that story so that it can be, you know, you can write a new chapter. You really can. You can write a whole new book for Pete's sakes and um, get that going on. So yeah, it's all about shifting that energy and shifting the belief system because we're really mistaken in believing that we need to struggle. Yeah. 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 Agreed. 
I just realized I would like to list your name here. Okay. So I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna type while I I also share that um, another thing that came to mind as you were talking was Dewitt Jones. Mm -hmm. He was a photographer for National Geographic. Okay. He always said. People always say, when I see it, I'll believe it. And he yeah. came to understand through photography, when he believes it, then he'll see it. You know, my partner is really cool that way. When we go out into nature, um, he'll say, I think I want to see a whale today. Or I think I want to see, you know, whatever otters today. And sure enough, they'll show up within moments. It's just amazing how that happens. So you know, he believes it's going to happen and off it goes. We have the most amazing time out there. <laughs> it, it, it sounds so delicious. It is and, delicious. <laughs> and it's interesting. We did not pre-discuss what we were going to talk about. Oh, no. I never do with any of my guests. It's just open conversation. It's yep. real. It's live. And yet the descriptor I wrote, I this morning I put a little post that said, be inspired to amplify the joy and sense of fulfillment in your life. And here we are talking about this. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. This really does. Yeah. Amplify the joy in your life. Just believe it. And it will be there, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'll post a picture of a hummingbird that I took and it says joy rising on it first thing in the morning because I want people to connect with their joy first thing in the morning. And so it's just first thing, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude is absolutely everything. And it will bring you more joy than you could ever possibly imagine. It's all about gratitude. Go to bed with gratitude in your heart at night and wake up with, jumping out of bed with gratitude for what, what is going to be. It's just a beautiful way to live. Mm, it mm -hmm. is a beautiful <laughs> way to live. And it really does generate. I, one of the things I like to say in the morning is today I choose and joy often is the word that I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. It might change from day to day. This morning it was today I choose gratitude. No kidding. Yes. Here you okay. are. <laughs> there you go. That was uh, my yeah. That's so cool. The other one that I often um, ask clients to think about and also often post is today could be the best day of your life so far. What are you going to do with it? because we always want to leave the past where it's meant to be and create a new day, create a brand new day. What are you going to do with this day? This could possibly be your very, very best day. What are you going to do with it today? You know, that kind of thing. Oh, that's gorgeous. What a great, great <laughs> question. Yeah. That can bring that sense of fulfillment into life. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so how do you feel fulfilled? I mean, obviously the, the, the photography, the spending time in nature, the helping clients come to that. Place. What is it that you're helping them? What place are you helping them come to? So I'm a relationship coach and I specialize in self-esteem for better relationships. So whether that is the relationship with yourself, um, with um, your body, mm -hmm. um, with your spirit, all of those things start within. And from there, the relationships outside of yourself become Gorgeous, gorgeous, actually. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Did that answer your question? Well, yeah, that was the start of the question. Okay. And so, so you find fulfillment in doing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. as well. Okay. It's, yeah. It's yeah. Good. Go ahead. I find fulfillment in knowing that the universe supplies. I find fulfillment in knowing that. Everything is always working out no matter what. So whether I'm going through something or whether things are just peachy keen and Jim dandy, it doesn't matter. I know that the next moment could be a better moment. So I feel fulfilled all the time. I feel fulfilled because of this great place I get to live at. I feel fulfilled because I've got my um, stuff together. You know, I'm walking the walk and I'm talking the talk. I feel fulfilled because... I know I'm making a difference and I feel fulfilled because I know that the next person I meet is going to be somebody that's meant to cross my path. There's so much more to that, but this is just the beginning of that conversation. And you know, I just have to 150% support <laughs> that statement that you have to talk. Yeah. When we had that meeting, you know, I thought it might be a half hour of coffee. We sat there for yeah. hours and it, I know, it was so good. It was just amazing. Yeah. And tr 
truly, you really do walk your talk. You have this confidence and this strong belief and faith that life can be gorgeous <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and it is all these wonderful things come your way due to your belief in your faith and, yeah. and you have to love yourself, right? I mean, it's number one. If you don't love yourself, how do you ever expect someone else to love you? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That is really the big deal. And for me, that's what the Shin Dao, the way of the heart is about. Mm-hmm. It's about coming yeah. to that place of loving yourself, who you are, yes. loving what you do with your life. Um, being kind to yourself, being compassionate with yourself. Yes, yes. You know, there is a a compassion coach, we'll call her. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kristen Neff did 10 years of research. Mm -hmm. And she said, it's interesting because you referred to yourself as a self-esteem coach. And, and, Mm -hmm. And I might based on her definition, I would encourage you to reconsider how you put that out there. (laughs) She said, you know, being um, self-compassionate is Mm. far more important than Mm. holding yourself in high esteem. And this is true, right? Mm Because what she says is that our, our society encourages us to compare ourselves to others. This is true. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And and self esteem is a focus on am I am I am I meeting am I if I, am I meeting those levels of uh, oh no I don't do it that way at all no. I do exactly what you're talking about because first of all self esteem for me is about um, caring about yourself so that outer people who give input from the outside about who you are who they think you are they haven't walked your walk. They just haven't walked your walk. They don't know who you are. They don't know what you've been through. And boosting your self-esteem to the level where you can say, yeah, I like me. I'm okay with me. I like what I represent in the world. I like everything, you know. But a lot of people struggle with that so deeply. um, And they really don't like themselves because of something that somebody said or something that happened in their lives. And so I help them to move through that and navigate through those emotions so that they can actually come out on the other side and say, hey, wait a minute. I like me. I can set boundaries here. I can say no here. I can take care of myself here and practice self-care. You know, those kinds of things are really super important. So it is about compassion. Yes. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. So really, it's self-compassion. It is. and when we have when we have that when we have that kindness and self compassion and self love, mm-hmm. then we have more of that to give to the world from this place of overflow, right? Exactly, exactly. Now I'm not saying that I'm perfect or that anybody who practices this is perfect. Of course, mm-hmm. we fall down once in a while. And of course, we make mistakes. I don't call them mistakes; I call it practice. So I'm just reframing myself as I talk. And um, yeah, so we're none of us are perfect, but we're all working towards being better than we were yesterday, just for ourselves, not for the outside world, just for ourselves. Ooh, there's a big statement. Did you hear that, folks? I know I needed to hear that one. We want to be a better version of ourselves for ourselves Mm -hmm. and not for anyone else. That's it, yeah. How many people spend their lives trying to live up to their parents' expectations? Exactly. Or their spouse's expectations? Or you know, you name it. And how many people try to keep up with the Joneses? I gave, gave that one up a really long time ago and I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm more successful than I've ever been. I'm more of who I'm meant to be in the world. And I think that's what it is. You know, when you get to that place where you can finally be compassionate with yourself and care about yourself enough that you can say, okay, this is who I'm meant to be in the world. This is my purpose here. You know, that's important stuff. That's really important stuff. That's the difference <clears throat> between loving your life and mm-hmm. spending your life searching and seeking. That's it. Something yeah. and you don't even yeah. know what you're looking for, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, geez, boy, time goes so fast on these on these calls. Um, what do you think it was? And 
if you're like me, it was a combination of things. But what mm-hmm. brought you to this place mm-hmm. of being able to say, yeah, this yeah. is what I'm meant to be? Yes. Okay. Well, it's obviously a process that continues to be part of my life. Um, I started out as a kid um, and I'm a medical intuitive and I'm part of the International Medical Intuitive Association as well. Um, And so at eight years old, I I sort of started seeing disease, birth, death, you know, that kind of thing. And I I really couldn't figure it out. And so I tried to squash it. I'll make this as fast as I possibly can. Tried to squash it. And then later it came back. So I learned to be an intuitive Reiki master. And then I, people kept coming to me for emotional help, physical help, all that kind of stuff. And so then I thought, okay, I got to add life coaching to this. And that came about in the most hilarious way. The guy was making a business card, Reiki master and life coach. I didn't know what that meant. Looked it up, went to the college, became a mentor, uh, coach for the college, all those kinds of things. And now, um, you know, I do both of those parts of my work everywhere and it's wonderful work and I love it every day I love it yeah Mm. Mm -hmm. and you didn't have to zoom through it that fast we do have a few (laughs) okay okay and okay then I'll add to that that there were lots of traumatic uh, events that happened in my life um and you know after I I had lung cancer I decided that I was going to live and I was going to live in joy for the rest of my life, as much as possible. It doesn't happen every day, but as much as possible. So most days are really good. Yeah. Mm, Beautiful. Yeah. So I want to take this moment right now to Mm -hmm. put your website up on the screen so that people know how to get a hold of you. Yeah. So So it's www.imaginelifecoaching.ca. I knew that, and I wanted to be sure. There we go. There it is. Yay! (laughs) So, so, who do you love to work with? Yeah, I love to work with um, men and women who, um, okay, there are two parts, obviously, because of the Reiki as well, men and women who really are in transition in their lives and who really want to learn how to have better relationships first with themselves and then with other people. So sometimes that means couples or singles, um, that sort of thing. Um, And for the Reiki piece, I really enjoy working with people who are having physical pain because I connect the emotional pain that brought them the physical pain in the first place and help them to release that both with coaching and Reiki. It's beautiful work, all of it. Yeah, it is beautiful work. I know that has evolved and organically become part of what my Shindao sessions are about. Mm-hmm. So, so often, I, a huge yeah. percentage of the time, physical pain does stem from some emotional pain that's been absolutely suppressed, squashed, causes energy blockages, so yeah. there's no energy flow and physical pain results. And people are um, always amazed at <laughs> You know, I had a woman came in, her, her shoulder, she'd had pain in her shoulder for six mm-hmm. months, did not have full range of motion. Yeah. Turned out it was some unexpressed grief over the yeah. loss of her mother. And yeah. when that was expressed, and it, it didn't mean revisiting her death and going no. through a whole no. big painful process. It was actually quite simple. It did involve mm-hmm. a few tears, but when we, were, when we were done, she was like, oh my gosh, my shoulder doesn't hurt. And, and I can move it, you know? Yes. Uh, yes. I, I could give you one example of probably hundreds. Um, I worked with a well-known musician who had a back in. Oh, we just had you freeze up. I'm going to just take this down for a second. And then see if you come back up. Oh, oh. Well, we lost Katerina. Maybe she'll be able to log back on in just a second. Um, she was telling us, sharing some, some stories of people who have released physical pain by addressing and releasing emotional pain. And that can certainly be a way to live a more fulfilling and joyous life, to be able to free yourself from the emotional uh, pain. Okay, here she is. Uh, we got about four minutes. Oh. 
Wow. Absolutely. It's beautiful work and it certainly is work from the heart because if we're not in our heart space, we can't hear the messages. We can't see the issues. If we're in our ego, the information just doesn't come through. Don't you find yeah. Yeah. So doing this work alone keeps us living from the heart because it's just absolutely a necessary part of what we do. Katrina, I don't know what the deal is. I can't see you, but I can hear you. I'm trying to lift you up on screen. I don't know if our viewers are seeing and hearing this last little bit. I'm praying that's the case because it's been beautiful. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to be here on the show with me this morning. Good to actually talk with you again. You know, we we post each other on Facebook, and but but to see your face, um, it's it's just a joy. You are so welcome. Thank you. Gratitude, gratitude, gratitude all the way around. <laughs> Thank you. That you. Thank you, Katrina. So my guest, Katrina Berger. again, you can reach her at imaginelifecoaching.ca. And tune in next week when my wonderful husband, life partner, business partner, um, creator of the the Shindao concept Neil Russell will be the host as I will be at away at a conference in Kansas. And his guest will be Woody, a gentleman from the Mankind Project. So if you have any curiosity at all about what that's about, I invite you to tune in Wednesday, September 25th at 9 a.m. Mountain for a fabulous conversation between two heart-centered men. In the meantime, create a beautiful week. Ciao for now. Bye, Katrina. <laughs>